my teeth by hand. I am oh, we're here with John Banson at the Double J Jersey's Farm here in Monmouth, Oregon. Thank you for so much for having us here. Unless you can come. Yep, and uh, we understand you're a dairy farmer. Yep, yeah, as you can tell by the cows in the background. Organic dairy <laughs> farmer. <laughs> That's and right. they do look very happy. So what are you doing here, John? Well, uh, you know, we're harvesting sunshine is what we're doing. Uh, we're using the biological process of the of the uh, soil microbes and the, and the plants and the cows, but when it all comes down to it, uh, we're, we're harvesting sunshine. Um, you know, it's uh, uh, the cows and the milk are a way to uh, make a living, uh, but in the, in the end of the whole process, it's the sunshine that's uh, doing, doing the work for us there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Organic dairy farming, uh, you know, there's, I also uh, say there's the, what it is and what it is not, you know, and what it's not is uh, not using antibiotics on the cows and uh, herbicides or pesticides on the land and not using hormones on the cows. Um, genetically modified foods. Ge genetically modified organisms, foods, uh, uh, commercial fertilizers. That's what it's not. We can't, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not allowed to use those and for really good reasons we're not allowed to use those. Uh, but the really important part for me is what it is, and, and what it is is uh, being able to treat the cows with respect. Uh, it's a, a highly mineralized food source uh, because uh, you know as the as you as you have healthier soil microbes, uh, you have more mineralized foods. And you know what we need to realize is that you know there's this large food chain, and we're part of it. You know, we need to make sure that the chain is, is a healthy food chain. And, uh, and so, so that's, that's really what vital to what we're doing here is uh, really building up the soil, uh, soil health in order to feed first the plants, the plants to the cows, and the cows to us. Uh, so it's really vital that, that, that it all starts with that soil biology. Part of the reason we, we transitioned to organic production uh, was to to have a healthier business because you know really sustainable farming is only sustainable if the farmer can make a living uh, and and part of that we saw that uh, it really matched what we we're already doing uh, and then as as we as we uh, got into the organic system I started becoming a whole lot better farmer I started uh, studying more about what was actually going on and the processes of why things happened and why good things happen, why bad things happen in the soil and the cows. And, uh, and so really that's, that's uh, it's, I'm evolving as I've been in this, in, this, uh, in this organic dairy industry. I have to make it work so the cows are the happiest. You know, I gotta make sure they're coming into really good pasture. I need to make sure that uh, in the springtime, if we get blazing rains that the cows don't stand out in the rain all night long. I'm dancing them back into the barn at that time. We're so going. Four o'clock in the morning, you'll get up out of bed. And I'll get up at 1 a.m. I'll get up at 12 at midnight. Depend, you know, uh, the cows want the grass, but if it's too nasty outside, they'll come up to the barn. You know, there's there is so, there is a lot about cow psychology you have to understand. Uh, if you pass a if a cow's passing you in a tight spot. You turn your head, don't look them in the eye. Oh, really? They'll pass you fine. If you look them in the eye, they won't pass you. They understand, you know, they understand that, you know, then you're you're acting like a predator if you're looking at them in the eyeball. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And uh, fields, do you want the fields to be square as possible? They don't like long, skinny fields. That makes them uncomfortable. They don't like that. Oh, really? Yeah. A cow that's, a cow that's happy is producing well, and that's... That's my, that's my job, is to you know, have cows that are happy and producing well. I was always concerned about the amount of flies going on, but I see that you've got that pretty much under control. The first key is just not having material for the flies to breed in. Uh, but then we use other things to help control them. Uh, one, is, one is making uh, building birdhouses and uh, inviting in swallows. Uh, uh, we have tree swallows, violet green swallows. We also have barn swallows in the barn and, and some, uh, some cliff swallows that, that uh, take up residence in the barn. And they're all helping 
keep the fly levels down. They're, they're, they're actually going out, they're raising their young in here, uh, going out and, and uh, getting bugs to feed the young, and so that helps us keep the flies down, especially around here, around the barns and the calves and the, and the house. Uh, you know, we also uh, uh, put out predatory fly wasps and they're just teeny tiny wasps. They're not very big. They're just, just uh, hardly can see them, but they, they go and, uh, and lay their, their eggs in the pupa of the flies that bother our cows. And, and their babies hatch and eat the, eat the pupa, the fly pupa, before it can hatch out and bother our cows. Mm -hmm. uh, we do some other things. We have, uh, uh, when, the cows, when it gets really bad on the cows, we have a botanical uh, spray that's uh, got some, uh, some essential oils in it, and we mix that with a little mineral oil and spray that onto the, onto the cows as a repellent against the flies. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also put up a, a sticky tape that's a couple hundred feet long, but very, very narrow, and the flies land on that and just can't get off of that, and then we can roll it up and, uh, and get rid of flies that way mm -hmm. before they reproduce. Okay, so John, I see here that uh, when I came rolling into your facility, your your farm, I saw some of these uh, boxes here. But these are these are actually our this is our nursery where we start the baby calves out, and uh, it's kind of like uh, when you bring a little baby home from the hospital, you don't want to take them out and pass them around to, uh, to, to take them around to every last little kid you can find and get their runny noses. Uh, and so they stay in these for uh, about two months uh, until they're, they got a good, strong immune system. And if the calves get a little bit of grain, it's all organically raised as well, which means it, uh, it's not, uh, we don't use, it's not raised using it with pesticides, herbicides, commercial fertilizers. Uh, uh, so everything we feed our cows, everything we feed our calves, everything we feed our cows has to also be organically right. grown. Yeah. The reason they're a milk drinker at a young age is, is their stomachs haven't developed a, a cow uh, uh, stomach has four chambers in it, but early on the, the rumen hasn't developed. She doesn't have that capability. A baby calf doesn't have the capability of taking in forages and converting them over to feed themselves. So, you know, at about, uh, about two months of age, then their stomach starts to develop that, that uh, rumen and, and the four chambers start to develop. A little too often uh, in agriculture today, we try and, try and make a cow be a machine and, and not, be a, not be what it's developed for. Right. You know, she's designed, they've evolved to do a certain thing and it's our job to make sure, you know, they're allowed to follow those. Where do you see the future of agriculture going, the, the future of farming going from here? Well, I really, I really believe the farmers who understand and can and can uh, uh, can adapt to the changes that we're going to be seeing with energy, uh, the energy issues in this in this uh, world are going to be the ones that survive. Yeah, I see that too. Got to be flexible. Yeah. Well, John, thank you so much for allowing us to be on the farm here today. It's been a great, great privilege and pleasure for us. Well. It's, all, it's always a pleasure to have people see what goes on on the farms. Yeah, well, thanks a lot. Well, I'm Gordon, bringing you the tools to be sustainable today. I am cow eating grass, methane gas comes out.